Hi guys, welcome to our MP Lab XCA tutorials for absolute beginner series. This is tutorial 34 DC motor speed control. In the previous tutorial, we learned that you cannot connect a DC motor directly to the pins of the peak microcontroller as a motor requires more current and voltage that a microcontroller pins will be able to provide. A pin of a peak microcontroller can supply up to 25 milliamp at usually 5 volt. In the previous tutorial, we learned that there are some interfacing techniques that can be used. We could use an H bridge constructed with four MOSFET transistors, or we can use some motor controller chips like the L293D that we're gonna use in this tutorial. To use this chip is fairly simple as we have learned in the previous tutorial. It can control two motors independently. The first motor can be connected to output 1 and 2 and the second motor to output 3 and 4. The VS is the supply voltage of the motor. Because we are using a 12 volt motor, we're going to connect the VS to 12 volt. The VSS is the supply of the chip itself. In this case, we're going to connect it to 5 volt. The enable bit are used to enable the chip. If we connect the enable one, it's going to enable the first driver because we are connecting the first motor to the first driver. And if we need to connect the second motor, then we'll have to enable the EN2 as well. The IN1 and IN2, these are the control pins of the chip. If you want to rotate the motor in clockwise direction, then we'll have to supply a 1 to IN1 and a 0 to IN2. If you want to reverse the direction, then we're going to supply a 0 to IN1 and a 1 to IN2. And if we send zeros to both IN1 and IN2, the motor will stop. The same as well if we supply a 1 to both IN1 and IN2. So basically that's how you can control this chip. But in real life application, turning a motor in clockwise or anti-clockwise directions or turning it off is not always all that is required. The speed of the rotation has to be controlled as well. As this is a DC motor, by changing the voltage across it will change its speed. If we supply less than 12 volt, then the speed is going to be less. And if we increase the voltage, then the speed is going to increase as well. The simplest method that can come into our mind is to use a variable resistor and connect the motor across this variable resistor by changing the voltage across the resistor. The speed of the motor could be changed in this way. This is the simplest technique but it got many disadvantages. The first disadvantage that we can think of as the motor is not a resistive load, it is an inductive load. It needs more power during startup than in running state. And it draws more current also when a mechanical load is applied to the motor shaft. So a simple resistor is not going to work. The second problem, if we connect a resistor, it's going to drop excess energy as a heat. So this will be a huge loss. And lastly, as the motor requires more current, so the resistor with higher power rating are required to drop the excess energy. So this is clear that you cannot use a simple resistor to change the speed of a motor. There are other techniques that can be used. The simplest technique that we're going to discuss in this tutorial is to use the pulse width modulation signal. The pulse width modulation, as we have learned in the pulse width modulation tutorial, is a technique of controlling the amount of power delivered to an electronic load by switching on and off a digital signal. The fraction of the period for which the signal is on to the total period is known as the duty cycle. So by changing this duty cycle of the signal, the amount of energy transferred to the device can be varied. So instead of connecting our enable pin directly to 5 volt, we're going to connect it to our pulse width modulation. In this example, we're going to use the CCP2, which is a standard pulse width modulation pin. Then we're going to connect a variable resistor to analog channel 0 of the peak. By varying the potentiometer, the pulse width modulation duty cycle will be varied as well. So this is going to also change the speed of our motor. So this is our potentiometer. We're going to connect it to analog channel 0. So let us go to MP Lab project and create our code. This is the project that we have created. We're going to use MPLAB code configurator to configure our peripherals. 
we're gonna use the internal 8 megahertz oscillator we're gonna disable the mcl r pin and port b uh, configure this digital input output on reset the other thing we're gonna configure is our adc module click on adc gonna leave the clock source to frequency divided by two the acquisition time is gonna be two tad the result alignment we're gonna align it to right justify and the last thing we have to select our analog channel that we're gonna use in this example we said we're gonna use analog channel zero and we're gonna need two pins rc2 and rc3 to send our control signals RC2 is going to be named in 1 and RC3 is going to name it in 2. So under the pin module, going to select RC2 as a general input output pin. It's going to be an output pin and RC3 is going to be also an output pin. Our channel 0, to make our code easier to read, we're going to rename it port for potentiometer and RC2 is going to be in 1. RC3 is going to be in 2. The other thing we're going to do, we're going to configure our path width modulation. Select CCP2, then select timer 2. We're going to start with timer 2, the prescaler, we're going to set it to 1 divided by 4. And the timer period, you're going to set it to 512. Select CCP2, we're going to select the path width modulation. The period of 512 microsecond is going to give us a path width frequency of 1.953 kHz. So if we set the duty cycle to 100%, it's going to give us a CCPR value of 1023, which is perfectly what we need for our analog to digital converter because the maximum value that our analog to digital converter can give us is going to be 1023 when it's reading a voltage of 5 volt. So this is going to correspond to duty cycle of 100%. Generate our code. Code was generated successfully. Let's go to our files. This is our C main file. The first thing we did, we created a, a variable converted value to store the value that we're going to read from our analog to digital converter. Then we're going to start with a duty cycle of 50%, which is going to be 511. And then we're going to rotate our motor in clockwise direction. So in 1 is going to be high and in 2 is going to be 0. And even our while 1 loop, we're going to start with our convention. We're going to say ADC start convention. Then we're going to select our analog channel, which is channel 0. We name it port. And once the analog to digital convention is done, then we're going to read this converted value. We're going to store it in our converted value variable. And just a measure of precaution, we're not going to decrease our speed below 10% of our duty cycle. So if the converted value is greater or equals to 101, 101 is going to be 10% duty cycle. If we click 10%, Duty cycle can see give us a CCPR value of 101. Then only if our duty cycle is greater or equals to 10%, then we're going to load this value as our duty cycle. And after a delay of 10 milliseconds, we're going to repeat the process again. So let us build our project. The build successful. Let us go to our simulation. Run. You can see the motor is rotating at 50% duty cycle. If I turn my potentiometer, you can see the more I increase, the higher the speed goes to maximum. You can see it's picking up the speed. If I reach 100%, then my motor is rotating at the highest speed. Then if I decrease again, you can see the speed also decreases as well. At 25%, you can see the motor is rotating really slowly. And if I increase again, then you can see the motor picks up the speed as well. 
So this is basically how you can control the speed of a DC motor using the pulse width modulation of a peak microcontroller. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.